Osio, Uli Hele Ste, Nagada, and Yawia, and Nijalaga. Hello, welcome, all you Cherokee folks. I'm going to play several songs for you, old compositions. One is called Adolistote, means prayer in our Cherokee language. And the next one was called Dondago Hai, which means see you again or till we meet again. So here we go.
OCO, it is my distinct honor, duty, and privilege to report to you annually on the state of the Cherokee Nation. After a year in which our strength as a nation was tested, a year in which our progress continued, and a year in which our democracy was renewed, I'm pleased to report that the state of our nation remains strong. It's now been more than a year and a half since we began battling the worst public health crisis in living memory. The COVID-19 pandemic has been, without a doubt, the greatest modern test of the strength of our nation. In the face of this crisis, the Cherokee people, including our workforce, have shown great resolve. Years of investment meant we had a health system at the ready when we needed it the most. Decades of sound financial management meant that as COVID ravaged the economy, no employee missed a paycheck. Deputy Chief Warner and I sent a plan to the council to pay all citizens $2,000 in COVID relief, and it was approved by a vote of 16 to 1. Above all, all of us working together did everything we could to keep our people safe and healthy, and we continue to do so. But my fellow Cherokees, dangers remain. Avoidable death and misery lay ahead if we fail to heed the warning signs. Our survival means that we must put our communities ahead of ourselves. We must use science, facts, and compassion as our guide. This means protecting elders from the spread of the virus by rigorously following public health guidance. It means that every eligible Cherokee needs to take the COVID-19 vaccine as quickly as possible. Another great test of our nation's strength has been protecting Cherokee sovereignty and seizing the opportunities under the Supreme Court's McGirt decision. The Cherokee Reservation, created by our treaties with the United States, remains exclusively within the jurisdiction of the Cherokee Nation. Let me be clear. My administration will protect the hard-fought gains for our sovereignty under McGirt. We will resist any effort in the Congress of the United States to erode McGirt. We will reject outside interests that attempt to divide us, to meddle in our own free and fair elections, in an effort to undermine our sovereignty. We will oppose any attempt to undermine our jurisdiction anywhere across our reservation. To the governor of the state of Oklahoma, let me repeat what I said in 2019. The Cherokee Nation is the best friend the state of Oklahoma ever had, but we must be treated with respect. Cherokee Nation remains ready, willing, and able to resolve challenges through cooperative agreements. We have proven that we can do so on a win-win basis. However, the governor's ill-informed insistence that McGirt is a crisis that needs to be solved will be met with the fierce and determined opposition of the Cherokee Nation. Cherokee Nation is meeting our responsibilities under McGirt, and we will continue to do so. What Oklahoma had 113 years to do we are doing in a matter of months. My fellow Cherokees, let us not merely build a criminal justice system that meets our basic obligations under McGirt. Let us build the best criminal justice system in the country. Let us build a system that places a true blanket of protection over our reservation. Let us build a system that puts justice and comfort for victims at its center. But let us also build a system that can rehabilitate offenders who are able to return to society. Let us build a system that is worthy of the Cherokee people, that expresses the best of who we are, and one that sets an example for the rest of the world. As we forge ahead governing our reservation, we would do well to ask ourselves, what kind of a sovereignty do we seek? My fellow Cherokees, a sovereignty that focuses only on criminal justice is an incomplete sovereignty. A sovereignty consumed with crime and punishment is a sovereignty that may consume us as a nation. The sovereignty we seek today must be a complete sovereignty, one that serves all people and sustains us for the next seven generations. Cherokee sovereignty must be a sovereignty that protects our elders. It must be a sovereignty that creates hope and opportunity for our children. It must be a sovereignty that builds up our communities from the grassroots. From healthcare, to jobs, to education, to protecting our natural resources, Cherokee sovereignty must be one that leaves no one and no community behind. 
Cherokee sovereignty must be a sovereignty that works for the strongest and surest among us, as well as it works for those living in the shadows and those who feel they're without hope. In that spirit, my administration will send legislation to the Council of the Cherokee Nation to create opportunities for the Cherokee people, strengthen communities where they live, and therefore strengthen our sovereignty. Starting as always with education, I propose that we replace every one of our Head Start centers with new facilities and that we expand quality childcare across the reservation. The more we can help our young citizens get a good start on learning, the more secure our future will be. Early childhood education is a critical pillar to a strong family. I propose that we continue not only refurbishing and expanding existing community buildings, but that we build new ones in communities where the need is the greatest. And I propose that we bring physical wellness programs to our communities. Let us begin by building a state-of-the-art wellness center in Adair County, where our own study shows the need is critical. Let us continue by replacing the aging Marcoma facility here in Tahlequah. Let us look across the reservation for even more opportunities for physical wellness programs for our people. Let us recommit ourselves to creating healthy communities. Thanks to the Housing, Jobs, and Sustainable Communities Act, we are in the midst of the largest investment in elder housing repairs in Cherokee history. I propose that we go further and expand the availability of new, low-income, modern efficiency housing for elders. We can take the successful pilot project in Hulbert and spread it to communities across the reservation so that more elders can enjoy their twilight years without worrying about the conditions of their homes. In the coming year, we will sharpen our focus on economic development, working in our communities to help them prosper. Key to this will be infrastructure. From closing gaps in broadband, to growing our public transit services, to improving water systems, we will make great strides. Among the proposals I will send the council is an historic investment in the council's road program, increasing funds available for council district projects by more than 180% per year over the next three years, pumping an additional 35 million into local road and bridge projects. My fellow Cherokees, we are already making the largest investment in history to save the Cherokee language thanks to the Durban Feeling Act of 2019. But the loss of our language remains a threat to our sovereignty and indeed our very existence as a distinct people. The challenge of saving the Cherokee language is as great as any challenge any nation has ever faced. We are in a race to save our language and we are up against our greatest foe the passage of time and the fragility of human life. Saving the Cherokee language is quite simply a mission on which we cannot fail. We must not fail and we will not fail. The best hope for success on this mission is in the hands of our youngest Cherokees. And so in this 200th anniversary year of Sequoia's written language, I propose we expand our language immersion program by opening a new immersion school in Adair County. We will not succeed on this mission, however, if we do not take care of our fluent Cherokee speakers. Most of these 2,000 men and women are over the age of 70. Too many of them need assistance to enjoy the quality of life that they deserve. And so I propose the creation of a new speaker services program that will have staff dedicated to addressing the needs of our elder fluent speakers. If we expect our fluent speakers to be there to save the Cherokee language, we need to be there for them. After a decade of dramatic expansion of the Cherokee Nation health system, we must keep investing. I propose that we address our oldest health facilities. Let us build a new hospital to replace W.W. Hastings using the latest in hospital design so that our people have access to the best health care possible. Let us repurpose the existing Hastings facility to be the heart of our expanded behavioral health programs. And in Salina, in Mays County, we must replace the existing clinic with a modern health center so that finally, every Cherokee Nation outpatient clinic is a new state-of-the-art facility. But fellow citizens, we have even more work to do on healthcare. COVID has laid bare what we already knew. 
mental health challenges for our people are not being adequately addressed. Yes, we took a major stride to address this earlier in the year with the Public Health and Wellness Act, but we must do more. Mental illness, addiction, and other behavioral health challenges are robbing our fellow Cherokees of their lives and robbing us collectively of the kind of future that we deserve. So let us begin building a comprehensive behavioral health system, which includes addiction treatment that meets the needs of the Cherokee people. Let us work to erase the line between mental health and physical health and recognize that our goal is simply wellness for every Cherokee. These proposals I have outlined will help protect and preserve Cherokee sovereignty because they will help secure our future. The efforts I propose reflect a belief that working together on behalf of the Cherokee people, there is no limit to what we can accomplish. On these efforts and many others, I look forward to working with Deputy Chief Warner, my cabinet and our council. These proposals reflect what this administration stands for in terms of sovereignty a complete sovereignty that serves all of us. Now let me be clear on what my administration stands against. We oppose a sovereignty built on division, one built on fear. Let us always invite scrutiny of our work as public officials, but let us always work together. We reject a politics based on cynicism, based on tearing each other down like they do too often in Washington, D.C. A sovereignty built on that kind of weak foundation might mean short-term political gain for a few, but it is a sovereignty that over time will surely fail all of us. And my fellow Cherokees, this much is certain. There is simply too much at stake for us to fail. The Cherokee people are counting on us to succeed. And so, my fellow Cherokees, let us move forward working together. In these challenging times, let us build our nation up. Let us lift each other up. Let us strengthen our sovereignty. Let us use our sovereignty in a way that inspires hope and creates opportunities for all Cherokees today and for generations to come. Wadil.